My name is Joe Monk, uh, but more importantly, um, I really prefer to be known as Tammy Monk's husband. And that's because in this quest for sainthood that we're all called to pursue, Tammy is nearing that mountaintop. And uh, I haven't even left base camp yet. So um, we have three married children, six grandchildren, and a seventh on the way. And this year, Tammy and I will be celebrating 40, our 40th wedding anniversary. I grew up Baptist. My father was the director of the church choir when I was in grade school. I met Tammy, who grew up Catholic in high school. I say we grew up together. She may refer to it more as she raised me. But either way you look at it, a few years later, I joined the Catholic Church as a part of our marriage prep journey. It was an amazing discovery to see unveiled all of the beautiful rituals, traditions, and sacraments of the Catholic faith. Over the years, through my work at State Farm, our family relocated seven times. In each of those church communities to which we belonged, we attempted to serve through the various ministries, whether it was lector, communion minister, hosts, or serving on the parish councils. Here at St. Pat's, I've had the honor of participating in finance council, various small groups, and more recently, the choir, the adult choir. So. Um, I tried out for the kids' choir and I didn't make it, so I joined the adult choir. So um, that brings me to my testimony to you this commitment weekend. Over the last couple of weeks, Father Schultz and Father Matt have both shared so many specific examples of the ministries available to us that, you can, that can help us grow in how we know, love, and serve the Lord. So with all of those various possibilities laid out for us, I want to speak to you about three words, words that may prove useful to you as you consider your commitments this weekend. They were included in the beautiful response soil song that the, uh, that the choir sang here. So if you would say these three words with me to finish the phrase, if today you hear his voice. Beautiful, beautiful. There are so many voices in our lives, aren't there? Voices that we hear from friends, family, our faith community, and more. Another important one is that voice in our heads. My question to you today is, what if the voices that you're hearing from inside you and from others are somehow, sometimes, possibly his voice? And to reinforce this possibility, I have a couple of personal experiences here recently that I just wanted to share. First, what I call the choir story. Over the years, having grown up in a family that, uh, that loved to both play and sing music, I've always appreciated its power. So because of the beautiful music ministry here at St. Pat's, I've asked myself a few times, that voice in my head, should I consider joining? Of course, there would always immediately arise at least four to six really quality excuses why I absolutely should not. And then on one random August evening last year, Janice, a small group friend, whom I had not seen in probably over a year, texted me. Hey Joe, this is Janice, just a friendly reminder and push that the first choir practice for the season is next Tuesday. You can just show up and you'll be welcomed with open arms. Of course I responded with a very thoughtful non-commitment text. But the very next Sunday at a Mass, a parishioner turned from the pew in front of me at the end of Mass and said, you know, you should really consider joining the choir. Okay, long story short, I joined the choir. And wouldn't you know it, on the very first Sunday that I sat with the choir in early December, Father Matt shared his Advent message about how all we have to do is allow our door to open and that God would walk through it. And quote, if you need a simple step to open your door, just sing. Okay, Janice, the parishioner, Father Matt, the voice in my head. If today you hear his voice. Beautiful. Second story, Mary's story. Um, just a few weeks ago on January 1st, Tammy and I are in California and we attend mass in honor of the solemnity of Mary and the priest uses his homily to highlight the last words Mary spoke in the New Testament. Do whatever he tells you. 
His message that day is that Mary's call applies to every Christian throughout history, not just to the attendees of that wedding in Cana. So we're leaving Mass, and the voice in my head is saying, okay, I need to be more alert to what God is telling me to do, but I just want a sign. I reflect, how often do we ask for signs when in fact God is telling us, that, hey, I'm talking directly to you? Well, I was looking for a sign coming out of the Mass that day, and the very next day, out of the blue, Father Schultz calls me and asks if I consider sharing remarks on Commitment Week. <laughs> so I'm muttering to myself, do whatever he tells you, do whatever he tells you. I'm not even sure I'm available, Father. Oh, it looks like I am. Okay, um, do whatever he tells you. And here I stand. If today you hear his voice. So these are just a couple of stories I know, and I have no idea of what your personal journey may be, but I do believe that God may be speaking to us more often and more directly than we are sometimes aware. My ask of you is that during this commitment season, you listen to those voices in your life with a bit more intentionality. And my prayer for you is that God uses those voices to call you into action. And if enough of us recognize his voice and do what he tells us, our St. Pat's Church community will be overwhelmed by more time, talent, and treasure than we've ever experienced. Thank you, and God bless.